Okay, so for the first chapter, I don't you go off the books chapter that we're supposed to be doing. I guess I don't think it goes into the material that we're going over very well. So what I like to do is I like to supplement the first chapter for my chapter one for my Cisco course, which is a basic introduction to networking. Uh, we're going to talk about basically uh, how um, different types of networks are used in our everyday life, how the different topologies and devices work within businesses, uh, talk about the characteristics, and explain trends in networking in general. Uh, we're going to talk about specifically uh, how the world is globally connected, lands, WANs, the internet, the networking as a platform, and changing in networking environments. This is a big one, uh, because here like we talk about LANs and WANs and the internet, but as we start talking about the changing environment, that's when we start talking about our PANs, our private area networks, or our campus area networks. And then we'll end with a summary. So globally connected, one of the nice things about our technology is It allows us to connect people, devices, information, and data from all around the world. Uh, great example, I just found out yesterday, five minutes after it happened, that China had an outbreak of bubonic, bubonic pay, uh, plague. I mean, literally, China quarantined uh, a city of 130,000 people, and within minutes, the rest of the world knew about it. And that's actually a big part of that is tied directly to our technology, our networking, our communication. Uh, so one of the pros is good communication. However, one of the bad is now we're all kind of interconnected with one another. And that's always kind of an iffy thing. So with this chart, uh, the different eras, fixed computing, uh, BIOBAD, Internet of Things, and Internet of Everything, you'll notice right now we're in the Internet of Things. We've transitioned out of the mobility and bring your own device type thing. Uh, and essentially, we are in the age of devices. We actually have more devices, not computers, not laptops, other devices connecting to the Internet. And right now, we have about 10 billion total items connecting to the internet. And that's kind of a lot, considering our population right now isn't 10 billion. It's actually around about 7 billion. And even that, even like half of them have internet. That's a far stretch, too, saying that half the people on the globe have internet. It's probably a lot less than that. But statistics have shown that we are actually moving to almost having 50 billion devices connected to the internet by the end of 2020. Uh, another pro for our networking communication is we can actually now have a global community. I view this as negative, but it's also some positive as well. One of the positive is you can actually now hold meetings and not have to be in the same physical location anymore. You can now actually be in a virtual environment. And actually, even with this course, we're starting to see more of a virtual learning environment popping up as opposed to a traditional one. So how does networking impact our daily lives? It changes the way that we learn, communicate, work, play, uh, pay bills and relax. Actually, uh, the way we learn. 20 years ago, this would not have been viable. The way that we communicate. Look at what we had 12 years ago, or 13 years ago, or 20 years ago. I don't know if many people remember, but we used to have pagers. Uh, then we kind of transitioned away from pagers into cell phones. Um, now cell phones are pretty standard. I mean, that's something that pretty much every person, at least semi-adult, 12 and above, at least has or had access to. 
changes the way that we work. Again, no longer are we tied to a physical location. A great example, I'm the instructor for this course. I could be traveling, I could be out of the country. Doesn't matter where I'm at, but I can still do my job as long as I have internet access. The way that we play online gaming has increased dramatically. Uh, the way that we pay bills, I actually have no bill that comes in a papered form. Everything that I deal with is all electronic based. Again, pros and cons for that, but I mean in general. It kind of does make my life a lot easier. But one of the issues is, there is no one size fits all. We have many sizes of networks. And that comes from small networks, a few PCs, maybe a PC, or maybe a, a few devices, to a, a small home office, which might connect a few PCs. More than one, but less than, you know, 20-ish versus a medium to large business. And that could be anywhere between a few hundred PCs, several thousand PCs. It varies. And then worldwide, obviously, would be all the, the all smaller networks connected to a larger network, and then uh, brought into some type of hierarchy. And if you think about the internet, it's actually just a large collection of other networks that are all networked together. So what's the purpose of the network? And a big part of the purpose is actually sharing resources. And we can share these resources one of two ways. Normally, client server is the first way. And that is where we have a server or a dedicated device hosting a resource, regardless of what it is. If we're looking at the top left, we have one browser computer, and he's browsing resources from each of these servers. Bottom right, we actually have one server with multiple PCs browsing to it. So, I mean, client and servers, again, subjective. But, again, who has the resource that you're trying to access? And so this is one of our major ones versus peer-to-peer, -peer, which is everyone sharing resources. And so there is no centralized management, there is no centralized communication, it's just I have this, you have that, let's share, and we share. Though it's less complex, but it's a lot less secure. And it's not scalable, that means that it's hard to grow. So, moving past this, would be our LANs and WANs and the internet. Again, a LAN is just a local area connection. A WAN is a wide area connection, but what does that really mean? How does this compare to like VLANs or PANs or uh, CANs? So, a LAN is just a local area network or a shared common network for resources. A VLAN is the same thing. It's just a virtual LAN. And it's actually used to scale out the access to common resources. So with that, what's a WAN? A WAN is just a large collection of LANs. So what would the internet be? The internet is just a large collection of WANs. So, how do we actually wire up our LANs and WANs? So, in the top diagram, we have two LANs and an inner network. So, our WAN is in the middle, and we have devices in each of the LANs. Our WAN actually connects both of those LANs. Now, this can be uh, devices and media and services. All of these make up the different components of a network. 
Devices are in devices, computers, networks, uh, phone services. Mm -hmm. uh, media is the actual physical wiring or wireless. Mm -hmm. Uh, last is services, uh, policies, procedures, standards, rules. Um, how are we communicating or what are we communicating? Again, other end devices could be all different types of workstations or laptops or servers printers or endpoints or cameras, mobile devices. I mean, in devices are so just broad. So we already talked about our media. We already talked about our services. We already talked about our in devices. What about the portion that's in our interconnect? And that can be any of our hardware. That's our routers, our switches. The things that actually allow us to connect our physical media. So what are some of our physical medias? There are three major types. Copper, fiber, wireless. Copper is actually copper based. That means the core of the cable is copper. Uh, that means it actually transmits in electrical impulses. Don't worry about this so much because we actually have a dedicated lecture just on our cables. Next we are via fiber, which again is just plastic or glass polymer, or plastic polymer or glass, and that actually transmits light. Last would be uh, frequencies or radio waves or waveforms in some way. Could be cellular data or radio frequency or Bluetooth or different types of waves. So how do we actually represent this? So our end devices, again desktops, laptops, printers, phones, intermediary devices, those are the devices that connect our equipment, our routers, our LANs, our other devices, and then our actual media. Wireless is a wave. LAN is a solid line. Our WAN is actually a lightning bolt. Why do we care about any of this? Big part of that is so that when we do diagrams, we can use the right type of key. We can make sure that when we talk about our LAN, we have the correct cable. So we've already talked about the two most common infrastructure types, LANs and WANs. But what, what about a, uh, a MAN or a wireless LAN or SAN? So oh, MAN is actually just a metro area network, and that's just like citywide. So I mean, how big does it have to be before it's a wide area network? Or how small does it have to be before it's a local area network? These are all conceptual. A LAN just allows you to locally share resources. Locally could be a pretty good size. A WAN, same thing. A MAN, same thing. So why do we denote wireless LAN as a WLAN? I thought a LAN was just a LAN. Well, a LAN is a LAN, regardless if it's a virtual LAN or a wireless LAN. It's all the same thing. It's just we like to categorize and classify it. Yeah. Next, storage area network, a SAN. This is just a high speed LAN that acts as a dedicated local area connection for the purpose of storage. A simple LAN, again, is just individual devices connected to a switch, all sharing the same resources. Again, a LAN, and now we're actually connecting two LANs by a WAN.
Lastly, the Internet. The Internet is just a large collection of WANs that make up WANs, and a large collection of WANs. So now let's talk about the Internet versus Extranet versus Intranet, which is different than the Internet. So Intranet means inside only, so it could be just a company only network. Extranet could actually be the customers directly that the company deals with. Not everyone, but just, you know, directly dealing with people that deal with the company. Lastly would be the internet, which that would mean everybody. So how do we connect people, devices, to the internet? A big part of this is actually covered in another chapter, but I mean here we cover basic internet speed with DSL or cable or broadband versus cellular or satellite or dial-up. All of these connect us to our internet service providers and then from our internet service providers out to the internet. Same thing with businesses. So now let's talk about networking at a platform. This is one big thing that we don't always get to discuss, but this, I think this is really important. This is our converged network. And that is before we had three separate networks. We had a data network, we had a voice network, then we had a broadcast network, or a TV network. But we've actually converged everything to one single network. And we can actually segment or separate our network using VLANs so that all of these networks are, can remain separate but still using the same connection or connections. Again, this is our data, voice, video. If you ever think about broadband, Cox, Comcast, anyone that has AT&T, Uverse, or any of the major broadband providers, they actually on one cable provide data, phone, video. All this really allows us to do is kind of take one network, one physical media, and actually start building upon that. And we're actually bringing the world closer together. Going back with online gaming or video conferencing, news, videos. Again, right after China closed down or quarantined 130,000 people, the rest of the world knew within minutes. That's a huge thing. So, what supports our network? Because we talk about networks, but I mean, what are services or what are things that support our network? And that's actually our fault tolerance, scalability, quality of service, and security. These are just four of the major ones. Not the only four, but just the four major ones. Fault tolerance is actually if a component of our network fails, can we actually get the information back to the other side? And the way that it works now within our packet switch networks, yes, if any one device fails, we can still allow communication between other devices. Next, scalable. We actually have three tiers of ISPs, tier one, tier two, tier three. Our tier three are what's known as our local ISPs. Basically, when you connect to your ISP, you have to go through their network to connect to the tier two provider. The tier two provider doesn't directly connect to the internet. 
and they connect to a Tier 1 provider. Only the Tier 1 providers connect to what we know as the Internet. And in all reality, the Internet is just really a large collection of all our Tier 1 providers. That's it. Now those Tier 1 providers consist of multiple Tier 2 providers and a bajillion local uh, ISPs or Tier 3 providers, but it's this hierarchy that allows us to be flexible, to grow, to expand as we need, and to keep up with that growth. Next, providing quality of service. So this is a big one. Because we're taking our data, our voice, our video, and putting it on the data network, how do we make sure that things that are real time have higher priority? For example, voice or video. Is that more important than data? I mean if your second if your web page checks an extra second, is that really that big of a deal as opposed to your voice, uh, your phone call being a, a second out of sync? The voice phone call could be a huge issue. The web page, not so much. Lastly, networking security. And that is actually just protecting the way that we live, the way we learn, play, and our work. And that's done through data uh, encryption, our policies, our equipment. And that keeps things out like identity theft, and criminals, and cheaters, and competitors, and fraudsters. Fraud people. So the last major section of this is actually our changing environment. And that is actually us moving to a BYOD, online collaboration, video, and cloud computing. So what is BYOD? And that's actually just a concept of us bringing our devices to the network. That's it. No longer having to be tied to what the company has, but us using our tablets, our notebooks, our smartphones, things like that. Next, online collaboration. No longer having to be in one area. We can actually now be in multiple areas and still collaborate. Whether it's through messaging or online conferencing or uh, voice or telecommunity, uh, telepresence or telecommunity, or just done through smart applications. All of this is changing the way that we collaborate with one another. Instead of having a on site, we can now do it from wherever we're at. So we can actually now call up people in Asia or Germany or France to get them on a sales or a design team meeting. No longer do they all have to be tied in the same location. So here's a big thing for video communication. Early 2000s, we had 250-ish million. 2012, we had 2 billion. And notice, while our world population has increased, our internet users are actually increasing faster. So what's cloud computing? Cloud computing is essentially just taking equipment or services or devices and sticking them in the cloud. But what's the cloud? The cloud is just a clever way for the internet. And this is allowing us to refocus our IT, reduce costs, uh, help actually increase uh, deployment, and become more flexible. Great example with this is Google Docs or Microsoft OneDrive or even just Office 365. No longer does an individual have to purchase Office. 
they can actually now just stream all of this off the internet. And that actually reduces costs significantly. Also means you don't have to worry about updating your software. Because as new software updates, it all, it, it all updates automatically. You don't have to manage it. Less overhead. But where is all of this cloud stuff stored? A big thing for our cloud services is they're stored in the data center. And that's actually just a, where a large warehouse with cooling, power, and fast internet. We stick our servers there so they can always be on, always have power, always have internet, and we don't have to worry about them. They're also controlled by air conditioning or heaters or everything to keep their environmental controls optimal. Does this change the way that we deal with our home? Actually, yeah, it, it really does. I actually now have a home automated system in my house. I can control the vast majority of lights, start my car, lock my front door, or unlock everything from just my phone. Everything is actually stored on a cloud app. In reality, I'm just logging into a web-based portal from my provider, but it's in the cloud. Now, again, all that really means is it's on a server somewhere on the internet. Can we provide power over our ethernet? And actually, yes, we can. We can also provide ethernet over our power lines using a specialized ethernet over power adapter. Same thing, we can provide power over ethernet. That would be more for like our wireless devices, like our WAPs or our cameras. So we've already talked about our wireless. So notice this is like a huge antenna outside the house. What type of wireless might use broadband? This is actually called WiMAX, the 802.16 wireless standard. So what's really funny about this is when we switched from analog to TV, uh, TV what happened to all of the analog channels? They were brought out that they could use wireless broadband. All the antennas were already all there. We just had to connect them up in a specific manner to actually allow for long-term transmission of our wireless signals. That's our WiMAX. One of the last set of major slides is our security. And our security is there to actually protect us from viruses or spyware or adware or malicious attacks or uh, identity theft or other types of things that we don't want to have happen. So how do we mitigate all these risks? We mitigate them through antiviruses, anti-spyware, anti-maliciousware, or other types of security controls. So the last major thing we talk about is our architecture. Again, we want to blend our networks, our data centers, our collaboration, all together so that we can have a modern network. That's actually it. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Let me know how I did. And I want to thank you guys and hope you have a great day.